Hey, it's Ryan at Prisma here. A little while back, I did a video on how to integrate Prisma into a Next.js application. And since that time, things have changed a little bit with the Prisma CLI. And in particular, the commands that you would run to do migrations and that sort of thing, those have changed. So I figured I'd do a fresh video, show you how to wire up Prisma in a brand new Next.js project again, use the new commands, and also at the same time show you how to do things like insert data. In the previous video, we just saw how to query for data. So let's take a look at that today through the context of this contacts application. Just a really simple app built on Next.js, of course, and using Tailwind in this case. And so very simple functionality. We can add a contact in. Why don't we add Nico? He works at Prisma, so we'll add him in just like this. And I've got his avatar there on the clipboard. Just a quick tip, if you didn't know, you can get your avatar from GitHub if you just do github.com slash your GitHub username dot PNG. That will give you your avatar. So there's Nico. The problem with this setup right now is that everything is just happening on the client side. So I start with a single contact here, that's myself, and then I can add additional contacts, but that's just using use state. Everything is happening in the local client state. And obviously this is no good. We want to back this application by a real database that has real persistence. So for example, I can just refresh and away goes that new contact. So that's what we'll take a look at today. Let's wire Prisma up. Let's get some data into the database and then we'll see how to use it across this application. So to start, why don't we get Prisma initialized. I'll come to the command line here and I will do npm install as a dev dependency Prisma. That's going to give me the Prisma CLI. So this will be a dev dependency and then we'll also need another one for Prisma, which will be a regular dependency and that's the Prisma client. So this one will be npm install at Prisma slash client. And once that's in, we'll be able to initialize Prisma and get going. So to do that, let's do npx prisma init. And prisma init creates a directory here called prisma. It creates this schema.prisma file. And then you'll also notice this .env file, which points to a database URL. In our case, we're not going to use the default Postgres that comes here. Instead, we're going to switch it up for SQLite. So there are a number of different databases that Prisma supports right now. We've got Postgres, SQLite, MySQL, MS SQL, and support for MongoDB is on the way. That's actively being worked on at the time of this recording. So document databases are coming as well. So I'm pointing to a URL of file slash dev.db. This is just going to put a dev.db SQLite database in the file system under the Prisma directory. I've got this concept of contacts in this application of course, as it is a contacts application. So let's create a table to model out those contacts. So I'll create a model called contacts. We'll start with an ID. We will want an ID for this. And I want to mark it with at ID saying it's the primary key for this table. And then I'll give it a default value. And I will say I want to use collision resistant unique IDs. Couple options here, you can do a UUID, universal unique ID. You could set this as an int and then just auto increment your IDs. I prefer to use collision resistant unique IDs. We'll need first name here, and that's going to be a string. We'll need last name, of course. That will be a string as well. We'll have email as a string, and of course, avatar as a string as well. All right, so we've got our table modeled out and we are ready to run migrations to create our database and get this table into the database. To do that, we will do npx prisma migrate dev. And this is a bit new since the last recording. The command now is prisma migrate dev. Prisma migrate has changed somewhat. It's still under a preview feature at the time of this recording, but general availability is on the way. So when we run that, we're asked for a name for the migration. We can say it's the initial migration. And what we get is this migrations directory, which has a SQL file. This SQL file is what's used to actually put the table into the database in this case. And you are able to go and modify these SQL files if you like before you actually run the migration so that you can make any changes. So there is the option to go and inspect everything, make modifications, and then run the migrations. So we've got dev.db here. Let's take a look at what's inside. To do that, we can do npx prisma studio and this will open up prisma studio in the browser 
Here we have our contact table and we have all of the fields we expect. No data in it right now, but why don't we add something in? We can just add me in like this. I'm going to paste Nico's avatar and just change up the user. That should be good. So I will save that change. Now we've got one record. And the idea now is we want to take from the database when we render that initial view to give us some data instead of using that hard coded data like we've got up here. So the way to do this is going to be to get the Prisma client into the mix here. And we can use the Prisma client in a few different spots. We can use it here in the get server side props function. And that's because even though this kind of looks like it goes alongside the client stuff, and indeed it does feed data to the client side, this function actually runs on the server. So if you've been around Next.js for a while, you probably know how get server side props actually runs on the server. And then when it finishes doing its work, the client view will be rendered. So this is how Next.js does server side rendering. So why don't we get the Prisma client? We will import Prisma client from at Prisma slash client. And then we can give ourselves an instance. Let's do Prisma is a new Prisma client. And then instead of hard coding in here, let's do a query. So for that, we can say const contacts equals await prisma.contact. So there is our contact model. And we can do a find many. So we'll find many contacts. And then once we have that, let's put contacts right there. All right, so if we save this, and if we take a look now in the browser back at our application, I'll just refresh to make sure it's working and everything is working like we'd expect. So we are getting data from the database already. That's perfect. The next spot that I want to adjust is when we go to save a contact. So instead of just using this use state update method here, set contacts, we still want to use this, but we also want to, of course, save our contacts in the database. So to do that, we can create a function which will be responsible for taking in some data and then saving it off to the database. So this is going to highlight the other spots, one of the other spots we can use Prisma in a next project, and that's in an API route. So API routes are, of course, routes that run on the server. That's what they're meant for. These are serverless functions. And because Prisma needs to be used in a backend environment, this is a perfect spot to use it. So I'm going to import Prisma client here again. And in the real world, in a real life scenario, you probably would want to reuse a single Prisma client instance. You would want to do some kind of singleton pattern. And I will link up a video on how to approach that in the description. For now, just for ease of use, we're going to new up the Prisma client here in the API routes as well. So import Prisma client from at Prisma slash clients. We'll do our instance again. We want a new Prisma client. And then here in this handler, I've got some setup already going so that I'm looking for post requests only. And I will take in a post request, I will take in the data from it, and then save that off to our database with Prisma. And in fact, we can start here by looking for the data. So we can say our contact data is going to be on the request body. So request body. And what we can do here is a JSON parse. And that's because I'm going to be sending this in with fetch. And I'm going to have to stringify the body when it goes to the API with fetch. So I'll want to parse it here. And as I get that, I can do const of saved contacts equals await prisma.contact.create. I'll use the create method. And we have to give it some data. And I can say contact data is what will go in. And then once I've got that saved, I will respond with the saved contact. All right, so everything should be good here. We might have to do a little debugging once we get a bit further along, but we will roll with that for now. So now we'll need a function to send our information to the API route to actually save that contact. So let's come down here and let's give ourselves an async function called save contact. And we can expect 
contact information to be in there. So we can start here by giving ourselves a const of response equals await fetch. And then we will pass the actual path we need, which will be API slash contacts. That's going to go to our API routes into this contacts file. And it's going to want to listen in this case for post requests. So we need to do some configuration here. The method we want to use will be post. And the body for that, we will do json.stringify, and we will stringify the contact information that comes through as an argument here. So now we'll want to check to make sure everything went through okay. And we can do that like this. We can say if response.okay is false, then let's throw an error. So throw new error. And the error that we want to throw is response.status text. That will give us our actual status. However, assuming everything goes through just fine, we can return await response.json. This is wrapped up in a promise, so we just have to await it so that we can make sure we actually get the content. All right, so we've got this function now. Let's use it here when we do our onSubmit. So we will still set our contacts on state like we've been doing, but before that, we will await save contact and we'll pass through the data that's coming through here. All right, so let's give this a shot. We will save this and let's head over to the browser and let's try putting Nico in again. Nico Burke, here's his email and let's put his avatar in. Once we do that, looks like Nico's in. If we refresh, we get Nico there persisting. And if we check over here in Prisma Studio, there he is as the second record now. So everything is in place for both reading data and creating data. We've done that in two different varieties. We've got get server side props to give us our initial query for some contacts. And then we've got an API route where we are posting data to. There's an additional step we can take here with Prisma to improve the developer experience and that is we can use some of the generated types that Prisma gives to decorate our code and give ourselves more information about what we can do here within our code. So if we take a look in the node modules directory and the .prisma directory, everything you see in here within index.d.ts, this is generated by Prisma. So here is our generated contact type. That is what comes from our model, our Prisma model that we created initially. And there's a whole bunch of other type information here that we can use across our application. So for example, we might want to bring in the contact type that we just looked at in node modules. And we might want to say that contacts here is going to be an array of type contacts. Contact. If we do that, we are able to get more information about what's in that contacts array elsewhere throughout the application. So for example, down here, we can do something with that contact type. We can say that as we map over a contact, it is of type contact. And that means that we could, for example, pull off various bits of that contact object. We've got all of the properties showing up here as we create our templates. We can also apply it to use state up here. So we can say that here we will have a contact array that helps to decorate our code a little bit more. And then there's another type that we might want to use from Prisma as well. This one's going to come from a top level namespace of Prisma. And the one I am looking for here is going to be this Prisma dot contact create input. So contact create input is what is expected as input to actually save data in the database. So the issue that we might run into here is that maybe our database model doesn't map exactly to what's expected elsewhere in the application. That is probably something that you should expect. It's not really the case that you would always have a one for one between your database tables and what goes through the rest of your application. In simple cases like this, you might want to use these generated types from Prisma, but in other cases, it might make more sense to generate your own types, maybe deriving from the types generated by Prisma, but maybe not using using them just one for one like this. So we've seen how to use Prisma in a Next.js application from initializing it to getting some data in a database and querying that data and then saving some data as well. We saw how to do so in the get server side props function as well as at an API route. Another spot to look out for if you are doing any kind of static generation is you can also use Prisma in the get static props function. That's an option as well. Lots of options within a Next.js project. Let me know if there are any other other topics you'd like me to go over in future videos, you can leave a comment for that or check us out on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash Prisma. Thanks for watching.